Good morning everyone. Today we have the last nice day before we have a week full of rain. Um, so we've got a few things planned today because of that. Um, first we need to go feed the calves. I'm going to check up on that calf last night that wasn't looking too good. She was looking a little bit dehydrated. She wouldn't take a bottle. Um, so we've made up some electrolytes for her to hopefully perk her up a bit. She wasn't too interested in them last night but um, if she won't take the bottle with electrolytes in it this morning we will um, kind of put in the drenching gun and, and put it down her throat um, just to give her some energy so she um, is able to drink from the bottle. Um, but what else we wanted to do was plant out some of the forestry tubes that we have. Um, we're going to plant some here. Ooh, I'm bad at this. <laughs> there. We're going to plant some here. Um, it's a paddock that we can fence off from the sheep. Um, and it's got lots of water in there because all the pits in this shed, like this one. Okay, bad at this. There we go. That, when we wash out the pens, flows out into um, that dam. Oh! Well, she's up. This little moo girl, she was the one. She was the one who was sick last night and couldn't get up. So, or didn't want to drink. So it'll be interesting to see if she'll drink today. Hello, Missy. Oh, do you want to suck my finger? No. no. Hopefully she'll take some milk or some electrolytes. Good to see you up. Hello! Do I have a favourite yet? Well, yes I do. This guy, he's so cute and he's got the most adorable personality. Oh, I love you. Yes, I do. I also adore these belted Galloways. They're a little bit more standoffish, but for personality wise, the Angus win. They are the biggest personalities. Hello, Angus. Hello. 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 Oh, this one in the corner is not looking too good. What's he doing? This one was fine last night, but it's gone down over hill. Uh, it's gone down overnight. Um, so we're trying to give it some electrolytes and see that. He's got sunken eyes, which we haven't had yet. He won't get up, but he's taking the electrolyte, so this is good. So how quickly a calf can turn. Everyone's been warning us about this. like this is how I'm going to be spending my day. Um, we're about to call the vet out. We wanted to call the vet anyway to do a general health check and uh, get some advice about the scouring. Um, it could just be a feed change and um, 
new environment and all the stress that went along with that. But this one was fine last night, drank really well. And this morning when we came out to give them their morning bottle, they just just got no life left in him. Been trying to slowly feed um, some electrolytes. I'm going to go and get some more from the feed store before they close for the weekend. It is Saturday morning, so um, they should be open till lunchtime. And at least I can get a few supplies um, that I might need for the weekend. And then the vet can advise us. Um, for anything else but I suspect that the vet will be giving this one some IV um, fluids and um, I'm not really sure what else. It's not looking too good for this little calf. The vet is about 25 minutes away so I'm hoping that he can do something um, for her. She pulls through I'll name her Lucky. <laughs> This is certainly the hardest part of living on a farm, raising animals, homesteading, is having sick animals that may not make it. Um, I find this the absolute hardest. I don't find um, harvesting our own meat hard. If we have a lamb that's been set aside to go into the freezer, I don't find that hard. But when something gets sick and I can't help it, that's what I find the absolute hardest. So the vet's just been and gone. He spent an hour here and an hour educating us, which was really cool. It's actually the best vet visit we've had. We've had vets out here for our sheep. Well, not to treat the sheep, but to do like fecal samples. We've spoken to vets and stuff. And they've been good, but they haven't been amazing like this guy. Um, he gave us a lesson in um, how to treat these guys if they get sick. Um, he sold us a tube so we could tube feed her water because she's severely dehydrated and she can't suck at the moment. So we can tube feed her water four times a day, at least three times a day, but four times a day if we can. And we can get two litres of electrolytes into her that way. She should perk up in an hour. He taught me how to give her injections. So I gave her an injection of an anti-inflammatory, which would last three days. And I've also given her an injection of an antibiotic. Um, he's sold us a bottle of antibiotics and some needles. So I now know how to <laughs> inject calves. Um, so he gave her a 50-50 chance to survive. Um, he said, sometimes when you buy from the auction, this just happens. You don't know how much colostrum, the quantity, the quality of colostrum that they got, and it just can happen. Unfortunately, um, it is a lesson learnt, but a valuable lesson, he said. He doesn't give her... When he first came, he said he didn't give her a huge chance of survival, but that she would be a great lesson for us to learn how to treat a sick calf. If we had got fluids into her earlier, which we had tried to do, but she wouldn't take it. Um, uh, she couldn't suck um, properly enough. Um, that would have been the key to survival. So now it's just getting those fluids and those um, the acid um, brought down to a more alkaline state, so just replacing her pH and the fluids and hopefully she can recover this is a huge lesson for us <laughs> a huge lesson for me um, I was the one who was doing the, the tube feeding and the injecting because I'm probably here more when Paul's off at work so I got the lesson um, yeah it, it, it was interesting <laughs> there you go lessons I never thought I'd learn on the homestead he also gave us an update on Matilda. How funny. So he reckons that she's old enough to survive off milk, so our um, trying to feed her has all been in vain. How funny. Um, she's old enough to go out in the pasture. So we might put her with the two six-month-old cows that we have out in the paddock and see how they get along. He said there might be a bit of argy-bargy because um, just aggression, some of them can be aggressive. She's aggressive, they're not. Um, how funny. So she's old enough to not be on milk, <laughs> just be on pellets. I feel like a real tool. <laughs> uh, very funny, but <laughs> what can you do but laugh in situations like this? We've let Matilda out, but she went a little bit crazy and jumped a few fences. She's still on our property. So we're just going to move these boys that were given to us over to where she is.
And she's in relatively easily, actually. She's introducing herself to the cows. There's a couple of sheep in there too. <laughs> now hopefully they accept her and take her into a little group. Sniffing her. I think she's about to take her last breath, if not, has taken it already. That said, it's very normal for auction calves to die because they can't guarantee how much colostrum they've had, if they've had any, because these are the cows that dairy farmers don't want to keep on their farm. And so they're not cared for as much as the ones that they want to keep on their farm, which when you've got hundreds of cars to look after, you can kind of understand it from that point of view, but um, it's hard to see on this point of view. So now we are trained to look after any other cars that might go downhill. Um, we were giving them electrolytes anyway, but um, when they stopped drinking from a bottle, we were trained. We are trained to um, feed them with the tube and trained to give them medications if they need it. So um, it's pretty crappy. This is the harsh realities of homesteading. It's the harsh realities of keeping animals, livestock. I've always been told with livestock there is dead stock, and I can attest to that. Um, it's not easy, and it's pretty crap actually. Just spending some quiet time in my hot house, trying to find room for some of my peas. So what if I can sow some in here that might grow a bit quicker? Just reflecting on the day, what happens, everything I've learnt, I've learnt a lot. It was a really crappy outcome, obviously. Um, I really struggle in losing animals, but getting the vet out here taught me so much. He taught me how to tube feed a sick animal, um, which I've already had to do today. We had a jersey that was sick last night. Um, she perked up in the morning. She drank her milk fine, but um, she's not severely dehydrated. I don't even know if she's de dehydrated at all, but she's refusing to get up. She's refusing to suck. So I tube fed her some electrolytes. Um, and he taught me how to um, administer um, an anti-inflammatory under the skin. And he taught me how to administer um, an antibiotic into the muscle. So now I'm equipped to do everything that he would do if I was to have this situation again, if I needed to call the vet out for um, this again, I won't have to because he's given me all the knowledge, all the tools, I mean all the equipment that I need to do this. So even though it's really crap um, losing our calf, um, I now feel like we are ready. <laughs> we are well informed, well equipped and yet yeah, ready to do this again if we need to. So it turns out there's absolutely zero room in here. So I'm going to go outside and see if I can plant these somewhere in the garden.